Hello. Good evening. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Good night. Hello. Good evening, Hello. teacher. Good evening. How are you? Good morning, teacher. Sure. How are you today? Good. Good. Yes, I got. Ready. Okay. Good. 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 So, how was the weekend? Fine. Thanks. Fine. Okay. Very good. Better than the last one, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> not, not, not too much. Not too much rain. Uh, because in the last one we had a lot of rain, right? But now there was more. We had more sunshine, right? And then uh, I think it's it starts to feel, you know. But the weather is very hot. Uh, in oh yes. Yes, yeah. it's humid at the same time, right? Mm -hmm. Hot and humid. Traffic. I, I go out today in the morning and there was a lot of traffic. There was a lot of traffic. Yeah. Oh, yes. Huh? I think that many people went out today. And because of the many things they have yeah, to do. Today, I think today, go out to with three numbers. Zero, one, uh -huh. and two. Yes, and there were many, many uh, also roadblocks, right? There were a lot of uh, policemen and soldiers stopping, stop, stopping cars, you know, and that makes more traffic. Mm -hmm. When they stop the cars and the roadblocks for the accidents too, right? So, and well, there are many, many reasons, right? Many reasons why. No, we had a lot of traffic today. So we can, this is how we can use the vocabulary from the lesson that we had last Friday too, right? There, was, there were a lot of cars, there were a lot of people out today. Okay, so that was something nice. Okay, good. Uh, just remember to keep your, your microphones mute, okay, to avoid the background noise. Uh, okay, and turn it on when you want to speak, okay? No problem. Okay. Okay, good. Now let's see what we had last uh, last week. Okay, here. Thursday. Uh, yes, so last Thursday. We were talking about too many, too much, and the counts and now counts now. Yes, that's right. Okay. So we were with the uh, presentation. Okay, we had this video, right? We watched this video. Yes. Yeah. Okay, yes. just to remind you this part, let me see. Okay, so these are, you know, some of the, the expressions that we can Okay, these are some of the expressions that we can use, right? Okay, well, we're going to start, you know, using uh, probably simple, simple sentences, right? Like, uh, there are too many cars. What are they using, for example, too many, fewer, more, enough, or oh, there aren't enough, there is too much, okay, there should be less. Okay, what is something that we have too many? Okay, we can use we have. Oh, there are too many, right? For example, we can say that there are too many cars uh, in San Salvador only, right? Okay, there are too many cars in San Salvador only. Okay, that can, that, that's an expression that we can use to express a problem that we have in our capital city, okay? Uh, for example, another one that we have with too many, Anybody who wants to share? Some person who wants to share a sentence, something that we have too many. 
There are too many people. There are too many people in San Salvador too, right? That's another thing because many people come to to San Salvador or let's say La Libertad, Santa Tecla in these areas of Pango because there are more oppor job opportunities, right? Sometimes a lot of people move to this area. For example, there are too many people in Santa Tecla, San Salvador, eh, Antiguo Cusatlán, what else? Eh, Soya Pango, right? Mexicanos in that area, there are too many people. Okay, what else? Another expression, another sentence. Uh, there are a lot of people in the street in that point in time. Uh -huh. There are a lot of people, probably too many. Probably too many people in the streets during the quarantine, right? And look at this one. Uh, there should a negative. There shouldn't. There should be. There should be less people in the streets, right? Okay. There should be less people in the streets now, okay? Because not everybody is permitted or allowed to go out. Okay, another one, good example, good example. There are too many police officers in San Salvador. Okay, there are too many police officers in San Salvador, very good, excellent. Okay, now try to use should be, uh, should be fewer. For example, there should be fewer people. Okay. There should be fewer, uh, let's say, fewer, uh, what, fewer people, yes, fewer people in the street, or there should be fewer, fewer numbers of ID to go out today, only one or two, not three, okay, because when there are three, is more people outside. Okay, what else? One more, one more. Choose one from here. You can use more, need more, adding enough, any sentence. There are too many people in the supermarket. Okay, there are too many people in the supermarket. Yes, sometimes it's more than the people that uh, should be allowed or permitted, right? So they have more. Okay, what else? There are too many dogs on the street. There are too many, there are too many dogs in the street, yes. There are too many dogs in the street. There should, there should be, there should be fewer, fewer dogs in the street, okay. Or well, there should be, or oh, there shouldn't, there should be, no, there should be no dogs in the street, okay, because that's the best thing to do. Yes? Can I say we need more space in, in for example in the world because we have a lot of people in a small in a small space yes we need more space you know for people right yeah sometimes it's just in one area you know we concentrate thousands of people and then that's not or that's more not good. principal cities for example uh -huh, yes because uh, I think in, for example, in uh, the United States, they have a lot of principal cities, New York, Chicago, and they, the, the people who live in that cities work and study and, and have their things at the same city that they live. Mm -hmm. But still, yes, and, but you know, there is always uh, Washington, New York, they are, overpopulated too. Okay, yes. There are some other states that have less people. Yeah, but that's a fewer people too. Okay, but that's a good example. Correct. Okay, I did. Anything to say? Uh, we need more we need more hospital in San Salvador. Yes, we need more hospital we need more hospitals in San Salvador, definitely, right? We need more hospitals. Who else? Somebody, I heard another voice. Teacher, uh, we huh? need more uh, security person or people in the street. 
we need more police officers. Police yeah. officers, sorry. Uh -huh. We need more police industry. officers. Okay, we need industry. more police officers in the street. Okay, for security, right? For security. Oh, security. Okay, good. Right, so then if you see here, for example, we need more public transportation, okay? In this case, we need more and better. We need more and better public transportation, right? Or we can omit more and we can say we need better public transportation, right? Because sometimes the transportation that we have in this moment is not not exactly what what we need right or what we what we should have okay any questions in this moment no okay if you see this no. requires a lot of practice right you know to to create sentences just remember the ones here need are fewer or plural uh, more more can be used in the two more is for count and non counts, right? Uh, enough is in the two, in the count and the non count, but fewer for count and less is for non count. Okay? All right. Teacher. Yes. I just want to ask you something. Uh -huh. Uh, in that case, when I talk about the, a, a great deal more, I didn't, I don't have idea. It is count uh, or non count? A great? A, a great deal? Ah, a great deal of. Yes. That's for don't count. That's for non uh, It's uh -huh. okay. Yes. I have a great, Thanks. a great deal of money. Okay. Oh, okay I have okay. a great deal of money. Ah, it's okay. It's okay. To pay, Thanks. to pay, not in my pocket. <laughs> okay. Yes. All right. Good. Then that is one. What else? Uh, well, here you can see this one again, right? So those are the expression. Okay. Uh huh. And this is the same. This is the same. All right. Good. Now we have the knowledge check. Tomorrow we're gonna do the knowledge checks to review what you have done. Okay, try to do it and tomorrow we check. I think that we have two, two knowledge checks to see. Okay, good. Now, uh, let me see Ninive, right? Would you please read the objective here in the 2.6? Okay. Uh, learn how to ask and answer indirect question in English. In this lesson, practice using indirect question by dis discussing mm -hmm. a city or new destination. By the end of the, this class, you will be able to form poly polite? Polite indirect mm -hmm. question such as could you tell me where the bank is? Do you know where the Nearest ATM is, can you tell me how often the buses run? And do you know where I can catch the bus? This lesson will help you seek information using polite, polite, uh -huh. polite <laughs> grammatically correct English. English, okay, very good, excellent. Okay, so you see here is um, probably we're going to move to another level of English, right? You know, practicing more polite ways to speak English. Okay, this is what I showed you last uh, week, right? Uh, remember we were talking about nouns. This is a, a quick review of the nouns. We have the proper nouns, are the names of particular people, places and things, right? So remember that we use nouns for, in general, for people, places, and things. And then, uh, for example, when we talk about people, we say, for example, uh, eh, Antonio, eh, for example, we can say Luis, and then they, they are divided also 
in in other let's say the categories, right? We have proper nouns, we have uh, common nouns, okay? We have abstract nouns. There are many different kinds of nouns, okay? But in this case, we have for people, like hey, or told, we can say Aide, we can say Carlo, Mariela, right, Luis. So these are the for people. Then we have uh, places, Africa, Morocco, El Salvador, uh, Italy, uh, Mexico, where we have also the United States, uh, the United Kingdom. These are places, right? And if you see, you can see also here Egyptians, which is the, the nationality, right? Usually in Spanish, in Spanish, we do not, we don't uh, capitalize the, the nationalities, right? We say Salvadorian, we use the small case. But in English, they use the capital E, okay, like capital H. Places Africa, Morocco, okay, these are capital letters. The month, for example, the month of the year, if you see September with capital S, October capital S. In Spanish, it's not necessary, right? But in English, yes. In English, you have September, October, November, all of them with capital letters, okay? The same thing happens with the days of the week. You say capitalize the first letter of most proper nouns. We do not usually use an article, okay? We say, for example, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, Friday, uh, uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So we use capital letters. Uh, holidays, also we have holidays such as Easter, you know, the Passover, Ramadan, uh, celebrations, celebrations in other countries. Uh -huh. Yes? Passover. It's a celebration for another country, right? It's like Ramadan. You know, these are celebrations, I guess. In Easter is Semana Santa, right? Is the, the next day after, the, the, the next week. It's the Pascua, I guess. But we don't celebrate this one here because what we celebrate is uh, Holy Week, right? The Easter is the next week, the following week. Mm -hmm. And then we have languages. Oops, sorry, sorry. Uh, Arabic, Spanish, English, uh, Italian, Chinese, Japanese, okay? So these are, you know, all the nouns that we can use. And then you have the common nouns. People, when we talk about occupations, the explorer, sailor, builder, teacher, the student, a doctor, Okay, that is a common noun. And in this case, you see, we don't use the, we don't use the, the capital half letter, we just use a small case. Okay, okay then we have uh, places like continent, country in general, right? A city that can be uh, one of many cities, San Salvador, Zacatecoluca, right? Uh, those are cities only in San Salvador. Okay, so you can say you have New York State and you have New York City. Okay, so different. There is a difference. You have San Salvador Department, but you also have San Salvador City, right? Then, pots, things, pots, like, you know, like ollas, right? The things that we do, the, the equipment that we use for cooking. So we have pots, eggs fish, and fun. What else? What else do we use? Uh, we use uh, continent, country, city, a fish, honey, salt, sugar, okay, and others. Common nouns, sailor, the ones that are count, a sailor, the sailor, to sailor. An island, the island, three islands. A ship, the ship, four ships. Okay, ship, ships, potato, potatoes. Watch, watches, country, countries. And then we have the irregular plurals. Put it, man, men, 
children use mouse and mice. And these are the abstract nouns. Okay, for example, when you say coraje, right? Then you say courage. It's a word, it's a noun. Okay, but it's not a, not a place, it's not a thing, it's not an animal, it's something uh, abstract, right? Like education, education is uh, abstract. Time is something that you don't, time is not a person, it's not a place, it's not a thing, it's something abstract. Love, okay, love is also something abstract, right? Idea. For example, you can say, I have an idea, but an idea is not a person, it's not a thing, it's not a place, right? It's on something that we have, it's an abstract. Okay, so then these are other kinds of nouns. These are categories, right? Exploring, sailing, farming, swimming, uh, what else, another one? Uh, running, jogging, uh, writing, reading. So these are activities that we do. For example, we, ha we have a writing activity can be also sometimes like an adjective. Fields of study, geography, history, geography, history, psychology, economy. Right, so then these are the fields of study. Food, corn, chocolate, fish, coffee, bread, okay. And these are some other gases, air, oxygen, the steam, which is similar to vapor, liquids, water, milk, coffee, gasoline, materials, cotton, plastic, silk. So these are different categories, right? We talk about particles, the dust, the sand, the sugar, the salt, the rice, the wheat, I think it's the trigo and some other common nouns, okay? So this is in general, if you see a, a whole bunch of categories that you don't need, okay? You don't need to, to memorize the categories, but to remember that sometimes it's not possible to say, I, uh, for example, um, to, to say, okay, this is only for places, things, and, and people, right? So there are some other things that have that fall in another category. It's just for general knowledge. Okay, then we have the, we have here the quantifiers, right? Uh, let me see, we have this one. Okay, uh, Ligia, can you please read what you see here in the, in the picture? I'm glad I bought a lot of batteries. Are there at any candles? I hope we have enough chocolate. Okay, so you can see here. What does the child want to know? Okay, what if they have chocolate or a good supply of choc uh, chocolate? When he say, I hope we have enough chocolate. The child want, wants to know if they have chocolate or a good supply of chocolate. Chocolate? I think a good supply of chocolate. A good supply of chocolate. Sure. The first or the second? If it is the first, first. one. Uh -huh. First one. Okay, if we use the first one, what is the question? I think it's a good supply because the, the kid is saying enough. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's one thing, right? And what happens if, if he wants to know that if they have chocolate? What would be the question? Are there this chocolate? Mm -hmm. Or we can say only Hey, I hope we have chocolate only, uh -huh. okay? Yeah. I hope we have chocolate. So in that case, it's because you don't know, okay? But you are expecting to have at least some chocolate, right? But when you say, I hope we have enough chocolate, that means that he knows that they have chocolate, but 
he doesn't know if they have enough chocolate, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, for example, uh, I don't know if we have enough time, okay, if we have enough time to cover all this topic today, okay? I don't have if we have enough time. I know that we have time, but I don't know if the time is sufficient, no. uh -huh, sufficient or enough. Okay, very good. So this is, you, you see, for example, this is what we have to interpret also, right? This enough, they have some, uh, some special use. For example, I'm glad I bought a lot of batteries. So what happened with this one? They have a what? Uh -huh. A good supply of batteries. Okay, because I'm glad I bought a lot of batteries today. So I have a good supply of batteries. Okay, and look at this question. Are there any candles? Okay, in this case, the person wants to know if, if they, they have, have, if if they have they candles. Have enough candles. Mm -hmm. Okay, if they have enough candles. So you see, every question or every expression has a meaning, right? Okay, so here we have uh, the expressions I showed you the other day, right? Uh, for example, when you say, look at this one on the left, the ones that I am uh, showing here with the mouse, with the pointer, it says, I have some batteries. Okay, all these words here can be used with plural, count nouns. But some of these words, some of this also can be used with non-count nouns, okay? The only thing is that probably the interpretation in Spanish will change a little bit, okay? For example, the first one, I have some batteries, okay? And I have some candy. What's the difference of some? Here will be algunas, and when you say I have some candy? Algunos. Algun, okay, algun, algo de candy, right? But here candy is like, for example, like no, no like, like the candy, the each part, each piece of candy, right? Candy in general, mm -hmm. okay? Like, like you say, for example, yo tengo dulce en la casa. I have, can, I have some candy in my house. Not a lot, but some. Okay, for example, I have enough candy in my house. Okay, they're using this as a non-count noun here. Okay, and this, this one can be used also in the count nouns. And here you have the word um, a great deal of, right? I have a great deal of candy, it means I have oof, a lot. Okay, I have a great deal of water. Uh, I have a great deal of what? Tell me a noun. Brandy. Coffee. Coffee. No. Uh huh. Brand. You Real. Said, brandy. You said brandy. A great deal of brandy. Sounds good. Liquor. Uh, okay. I have a great a great juice. deal of, of whiskey. Of juice. Uh huh. Yes. Orange juice. I have a great deal of oranges. Don't buy any, right? <laughs> uh, what else? Milk. Milk. Uh huh. Then I don't have any negative, right? I don't have any any uh, let's say any um, any sugar. Okay, I don't have any sugar in my house. I don't have any flour in my house. Make bread. Okay, I don't have enough. If you see this one, any, enough, a lot, this can be used in count and non-count. Mm -hmm. The difference is many for count and much for non-count. Okay, here the three, here the three, some, enough, and a lot of in the two cases. Here there is a difference, a few, a little, okay? Uh, several, a great deal of. Many, much. So you can see here the differences. Okay? Okay. 
perfect. So this is what this is the res, like you know like a, a summary right of the topics that we have seen, which is the count nouns, no count nouns. We also have the quantifiers, right? A few, a little, some, any, enough, uh, more, less, all those words. Now we're going to see something else that is, uh, okay, what is, what is your question, uh, William? Where's William? Is William Rosales here? No. No, because I see he's writing something in the chat, but I don't see him. Okay. Well, but if you, ha if you have any questions, people, let me know, okay? If you have doubts or something that is not really clear yet, okay, we can do more exercises, right? And then until we, we have the idea uh, clear. Now, I'm going to show you the next video. Okay, in the next video is something related to this, okay? But now, as I told you before, we're going to move to a, let's say to a higher level. Now we're going to use uh, questions to ask a, about something probably basic, but in a more polite way, okay? For example, if I say, what time is it? That's basic, a basic question, right? How can we change this question into a more, okay, or how can we ask the same question, let's say in a more polite way? Do you know what time is it? What time, more or less? Okay, yes, there is a little. Oh, huh? oh, oh I think, could you tell me what the time is? Okay. Well, what time is it? Okay, yes, there is one thing that you have to do there. Uh -huh, but that's the idea, right? Could you tell me, do you know, okay? Or, okay, for example, this is another way to express a politeness, okay? A good manners, okay? So this is what we're going to see in this moment in the following video. Okay, can you, you see it? Just let me check the sound again. Wait, 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 there is a problem here. There is no audio. It's about a city or a new place that you... Hi, everyone. At the end of this class, you'll be able to ask and answer indirect questions about a city or a new place that you might visit. For example, you'll be able to make the following questions. Could you tell me where the bank is? Do you know where the nearest ATM is? Do you know where the restrooms are? Can you tell me how often the buses run? Do you know where I can catch the bus? Before I begin to explain the grammar involved, what I would like to do is I would like to play an audio program which illustrates how the topic is used. And so what we're going to do at this point is we're going to listen to a conversation and we're going to listen to different questions that are asked about a city. Your task is to listen carefully and I will ask you questions at the end of the audio program. Excuse me, could you tell me where the nearest ATM is? There's one upstairs across from the duty-free shop. Great. And do you know where I can catch a bus to the city? Sure. Just follow the signs for transportation. Okay. And can you tell me how often they run? They run every 20 minutes or Excuse me, it's me again. 
I'm sorry. I need some more information, if you don't mind. Do you know how much the bus costs? It's $20. You can buy a ticket on the bus. $20? Wow. Well, a taxi costs about $50. Hmm. Okay. And do you know where a bookstore is? I'd like to get a guidebook. Go upstairs and turn right. You'll see one on your left. Thanks very much. Have a nice day. You too. Let me present some structure at this time. What we want to do in this class is we want to learn how to change direct questions into indirect questions. And the reason that we want to do this is because it's a lot more polite to use indirect questions. So for example, if I say, where's the bank? It's less polite than if I say, could you tell me where the bank is? And what we're going to learn is we're going to learn some rules that we're going to follow in changing these questions from direct to indirect questions. We're going to learn how to do it with the verb to be. And we're also going to learn how to change WH questions with either do or did. Now let's try to make sense of this whole concept here. What we want to do is we want to be able to turn direct questions into indirect questions. And let me propose a formula on how to do this, if you will. So we want to turn the question, where is the bank, into an indirect question. And the way that we'll do that is we will use some kind of polite model verb. So in this case, could you tell me? All right, and then this is going to be followed by a WH word. In this case, it happens to be where, but it could be any other WH word. For example, it could be what time, how often, when, etc. Any kind of WH word is what we're going to include here. So could you tell me, and in this case, I will ask where. This is going to be followed by the subject. So in this case, it happens to be the bank, where the bank, and then finally, we're, we're going to include the verb. So in this case, could you tell me where the bank is? And just so that we follow the pattern that I'm proposing here, I'm going to go ahead and play with the colors for now. Now, let's try to make sense of that second question that you see there towards the bottom. Where are the restrooms? That's the direct question. What we want to do is we want to turn that question into an indirect question. And you can do that in different ways. For example, you can do that by asking, do you know? Okay, or using another model verse. So in this case, I'm going to propose in using this um, polite way of doing it. Okay, so I'm basically just going to copy that so you can see that it's the, basically the same pattern that we're following. We have, could you tell me? And that follows a WH word. So in this case, where? Okay, so the subject is what's going to change now. And instead of saying the bank, we're now going to say the restrooms. And then it's going to follow the verse. So in this case, it happens to be that since restrooms are plural, then we're going to use the verb to be are instead of the verb to be is. And, um, well, um, the phrase here could change, as I mentioned, just like we have it there on the book. Do you know where the restrooms are? And basically, we're going to follow the same pattern for the questions that you see towards the bottom. The only difference here is that we're no longer using the verb to be. We're using other verbs. And we could be talking about the present. We could be talking about the past. And that's what it means by either do or did. So let's try to make sense of those as well. So in this case, it's a similar pattern, if you will. How often do the buses leave? Okay, what we want to do is we want to be able to change this question into an indirect question. And again, we can use the same pattern that you see here. So for, I'm just going to go ahead and copy this previous one that you see there so that you can see that uh, nothing changes or just a few things will change. So in this case, could you tell me? I mean, that's similar thing. Could you tell me? And we're going to use uh, the uh, WH question. So in this case, it's going to be how often. 
all right and then that is followed by the subject so in this case the subject is the buses and then that is followed by the verb and so in this case it's no longer the verb to be but now it's the verb leave how often do the buses leave could you tell me how often the buses leave let's try to make sense of the other questions that you see there towards the bottom so in this case what we want to do is we want to use a polite way of asking so you can ask in the form of could you tell me do you know can you tell me um, and then it just repeats itself with do you know so in this case we're gonna use do you know that's the second question there do you know what time the bank opens so let me go ahead and write that example now do you know that follows the WH word so in this case is what time then that follows the subject And one thing that I want you to notice here is that in our indirect question, we remove the auxiliary verb. So we don't include does or do. It no longer exists in our indirect question. Do you know what time the bank opens? And the other thing that happens here is that the verb in this case will need to have an S and that's because since we don't have an auxiliary verb and the subject of the verb is singular and we're talking in the present therefore we need an S as you can see there and uh, well let's do the last one there uh, what um, when okay as you can see this is what I was telling you when you were giving me the example right that the question there are two questions in one Okay, do you know okay, what time does the bank open? But when we use the, the WH question, the indirect question, then we say, do you know? And then the next sentence is, what time the bank opens? Okay, or do you know? For example here is, could you tell me where the bank is? No, where is the bank? If you say, could you tell me, then where is the bank? Two questions, right? So remember that we have to use only one. That's what he is explaining in this moment. Did flight 566 arrive? So in that case, um, the question could be, do you know? And the WH word is when. And uh, the subject is flight 566. And in this case, we have to change the verb to the past because we're not using an auxiliary. Uh, like we're using the auxiliary, when did fly 566 arrive? In this case, this verb is in the present, but that's because we're using the auxiliary did. So in this case, since we removed that auxiliary verb that I mentioned, we need to change that verb to the past form. The last thing that I would like for you to do now is to practice the concepts that we talked about. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to post some questions here. These are common questions that people ask whenever they visit another country, another city, a place you're not familiar with. What are those questions? For example, how much do taxes cost? And remember that our goal is to change these direct questions into indirect questions. And you're going to follow the formula that I gave you. So how much do taxes cost? Well, you can ask use do you know or could you tell me or can you tell me and then follow this formula what I'm going to do is I'm going to post some questions here taxes cost and okay so that is the, the challenge that we have in this one, right so what do we have in this one that says how much they say, how much do taxes cost? In this case, do you know uh -huh. how sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh -huh. taxes cost? Do you know how much the taxes cost? 
Okay, if you see, for example, we don't need to use the, right? So we have, do you know? We can use, for example, here. Do you know well, well, how much taxes? Taxes. With, oh. the, with the S. No, no, because it's plural. No. Because it's plural. Let me think we can. Okay, here. Do you know? Okay, then we have uh -huh. how? How much? How much? How much? Uh -huh. The taxes. Taxes. Cost. Uh -huh. Because cost. there is no da, right? There is no da here. Mm. Taxes. Taxes cost. Cost. R. Okay, and then question mark. Okay, because here we only have to you wait here. Okay, good. Do you know how much taxes cost? Okay, that is the, the question. If you see what did we change? We omitted do. Okay, and then we don't have to say how much is taxes cost. So how much do taxes cost? This is the only thing that we omitted. What would be the, the second one? Where should I go shopping? Could you tell me? Could you tell me? Could you, oh, tell you, can, me? Uh -huh, you can choose from here. Uh, could you tell me? Do you know? Uh, well, those are the ones that we have for this moment. Uh -huh. Could you tell me? Could you tell me? Where I show go shopping? Could you tell me where? Uh huh. I show. Where I should? Uh huh. The shopping go. Shopping go. Shopping go. Could you tell me where I should go shopping? Go shopping. Shopping go or go shopping. Uh, For me, I think shopping go. Okay. No, shopping. Go, shopping. go shopping. Go shopping. Go shopping because it's a phrase out there. No. No. Uh, should is a modal auxiliary. It should go shopping. Okay. Now, if you see, uh, I should go shopping. This is a it looks like if it is affirmative, right? I should go shopping. And then the question is here, could you tell me? Okay. Could you tell me where I should go shopping? Okay, like give me an advice. And then you have the question. Okay, what about the third one? Do you know? Where can I get a map? Do you know? Okay. Can you use another one? Do you know? Do you know yes. where I can get a map? Do you know? Uh-huh. Where I can get a map? Mm -hmm. Where I can get a map? Okay, I can get a map, right? No, can I get a map? This case, you only invert. Okay, in this one, you invert. I should, and it's not should I. And this one is I can, and not can I. Okay. Next one. Where is a good place to meet friends? Do you know? Okay. Do you, do you know? Where, where a good place to meet friends? A good place? Yes. Yes, if. Okay. 
Okay. So say a good place to meet friends is, and then you can see the answer, right? Is a, the university. Okay, you can say, well, uh, the answer could be a good place to meet friends is the university. You see, you see the continuation of the of the grammar structure. Okay. Some polite questions sounds strange. Uh -huh. But we use them in Spanish. We use them in Spanish. The only thing that, uh, and in your English, remember that when we use, yeah, because it's not the same, hey, how much do taxes cost? It's not the same, like, could you tell me? Do you know? Uh, for example, uh, could you tell me uh, where, where he lives, where she lives? Is uh, you show also that you can manipulate the different uh, grammar structures, right? So that means that you have knowledge. Okay, because you can say, where can I get a map? Can you tell me? Could you tell me? Okay, do you know by any chance? This is another one. Do you know by any chance where I can get a map? Okay, so there are many different expressions to make your English sound more, uh, let's say, educated, more polite, okay? Questions in this moment? Teacher, uh, how can differentiate <laughs> when the verb is in the the end uh, on the question? Because the example says that the verb is changed the position for the to the end. Mm -hmm. Yes, but remember that always. the verb is always after the subject. Okay, and oh, okay. the subject is this one. Ah, oh, okay. Okay, a good place. So here says a good place, so what? To meet friends is. For example, here, the bear is after I, I can. And oh. Here is, I should go. And here, well, this case, taxes. Taxes cost. If you see, cost is at the end. Go shopping is the action, right? It's an activity. Oh. Okay, okay. So this is where you have it, yes. This is because it's an imperative verb. I can. Okay, I can, can get. Okay. Okay, so then this is how you will differentiate, okay? Differentiate. Differentiate. That would be differentiate. Okay. Okay, thank you. All right. Good. Now uh, we're going to no wait a minute we have to okay here okay I'll show you one more example for you to have this idea okay okay so in some other books you will find these uh, questions like uh, embedded, right? Embed is incrustado, incrustado, right? So one question inside another question, okay? That is the meaning. It is similar indirect question, right? For example, could you please explain? Okay, could you please explain? And then what they are going to discuss at the conference. Okay, could you please explain what they are going, what, uh, what he is going to teach uh, today? Okay, there is a mistake here, discuss, no TV. Okay, what else? Do you know what time the staff meeting begins? Do you know what time the staff meeting, meeting starts? Okay, for example, do you know what time this class begins? Yes? Yeah. This class begins? At 8 p.m. At 8 p.m., okay. Do you know what time this class ends or finishes? At 9 p.m. Uh -huh. This class ends at nine o'clock. Okay, good. 
So you see, those are the ways that you can use it, right? For example, do you know, uh, for example, so here, what is the link to, to join this class? What is the link? That is the question, right? Direct question. Mm -hmm. What is the link to join this class? What would be the, the indirect question? Do you know? Can you tell me? Uh-huh. Yes. Who is speaking? Do you know what the link is? Do you know what the link is? But there is some information missing. Okay. Ah, what the link for the class is? Uh, okay, but I, listen to what I, my question. I mean, that's, that's okay. The two, the two are correct, but listen to this. Uh, what is the link to join this class? Do you know what what is the link to enjoy the what the link to enjoy the class is? To join, uh -huh. good. To, to join, join the class is. All right, all right. Do you know what the link to join this class is? All right. Then you can say, mm, no, I don't know it very well but i can look for it and send it to your whatsapp chat right got it okay so these are you know some practical ways to to use the the indirect or embedded question when do we use indirect or embedded question we use indirect or embedded questions in polite and formal situations in writing and in future, in the future, right? For example, would you please share your experience with us? Okay, what do you think we should write next? Would you be willing to come to our school and give a lecture? Okay, you see these questions are more polite, right? For example, you say, so we write next, what do we write next? Instead of saying, what do you think? All right. Okay. Good. Okay. Now, okay, if you see, you have a lot of information this moment, right? So then tomorrow we're going to have uh, just uh, probably 30 or 40 minutes of practice using the nouns, the quantifiers, and the embedded questions, right? All right, the embedded questions using, for example, the, the, do you know, for example, do you know why there is so much traffic these days? I am using the non-count noun, I am using the quantifier, and I'm using the embedded question. Okay, so then uh, okay. please write write uh, five sentences to practice okay similar to the ones that i have just given you this moment in this moment do you uh, for example uh could you tell me could you tell me the reason or why or could you uh, show me the let's say the the statistics of uh, how many people there are in the streets okay you just Create a sentence, five sentences, or I mean, to practice, right? And tomorrow we're, you're going to tell me those sentences, and we're going to analyze each. And that's the only way to, you know, to to use the to learn how to use this is practice. Okay. So tomorrow we have like okay. practice using the three the three points, right? Count, non count nouns, quantifiers, fewer, enough, less, uh, more, and then using the embedded question. Okay. Okay. Okay, good. people. Okay. So okay. Have a good night. Thank you. Relax good night. And, and see you tomorrow. Okay. See you see tomorrow. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye.